what real estate is, what real estate is, and to be a successful, successful real estate agent. And it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take a step back. It doesn't matter if the market's going up, the market's going down. There's a few fundamental things you have to do to be successful, kind of regardless of the market. And that is having as many real estate focused conversations every day, okay? Real estate focused conversations every day. If you focus on having, and I'm gonna give you a standard 10 real estate conversations every day with different people, new people, different people, not the same 10 people every day, that's not gonna help you guys. But if you have 10 new real estate focused conversations every day, you're gonna be successful, okay? Because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're gonna have your own Home Advantage account and it's gonna tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're in escrow. And you now can manage through the Home Advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the session today. We're getting started. We're getting started. You know, while, while we get people jumping in here, uh, drop a comment and tell us where you're where you're joining from, you know, because I'm I'll start. I'm in sunny Mexico right now. Right. So it's really nice. Uh, very nice outside. It's uh, 75 and sunny. And it's been that way since January. So, you know, don't, don't want to make you all jelly. But, you know, that that's that's where I, I hang out. So that's my where I'm coming from, Mexico. I love it. I'm in sunny South Florida, born and raised oh, here. So it's yeah. always, it's always sunny here. So I'm in Miami and uh, Fort Lauderdale. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be warm and it's actually spring break season. So that's quite fascinating. Oh. Um, I love that those that are putting in, in the chat who, where they are from, um, Orlando too, not too far away. For those that don't know me, my name is Tara Carter and I am your lab coat agents moderator. One of our fabulous moderators that we have, cause we have so many and we are so lucky to have amazing partners like Gus, who is the founder and CEO of ISAs. If you want to run a business to take and leverage your your listings that you currently have and generate deals that are qualified seller leads, then you got to stay tuned on this. Make sure that you put your questions in the chat, your takeaways and whatnot, because he is the, what he created is incredible and will not only save you money, it will make you more money and is really an easy way to do business. Don't you think, Gus? Yeah, 100% Tara. And I love that you're joining us for, for this discussion because you're not just a moderator, but you are a practitioner of circle prospecting, right? So you know you know exactly what we're talking about. You're an expert in this kind of uh, lead generation. So so let, let, let's jump into it. I, I want to set the table for the discussion because I want to get into the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty, the how to. But I want to start off with why why circle prospecting? Why this can be such a useful and and profitable activity for real estate agents and real estate teams, right? Really really interesting for folks to check this out. I want to tell people. Fundamentally, okay, fundamentally, what real estate is, what real estate is, and to be a successful, successful real estate agent, and it doesn't really matter, I'm going to take a step back, it doesn't matter if the market's going up, the market's going down, there's a few fundamental things you have to do to be successful, kind of regardless of the market, and that is having as many real estate focused conversations every day, okay? real estate focused conversations every day. If you focus on having, and I'm gonna give you a standard 10 real estate conversations every day with different people, new people, different people, not the same 10 people every day, because that's not gonna help you guys. But if you have 10 new real estate focused conversations every day, you're gonna be successful, okay? You're going to be successful. Yes, there's more into it for sure. You have to have scripting. You have to convert. You have to follow up. All of those things are true regardless of the lead source, actually. It doesn't matter, okay? But if you focus on having as many qualified real estate conversations every single day, you're going to be successful no matter what. When the market is super hot, 
it's a lot easier to have those conversations. When the market is shifting, it's a little bit harder, right? You, you got to make, make more calls. You need more leads. You need more time to generate the exact same number of conversations you were having a year ago. And I think that's true for a lot of us in some of these shifting markets. Maybe not so much in South Florida. That's a crazy market. But in other parts, like in California and the West, definitely, you know, a little bit of a different situation. But, but the fundamental fact is the same, folks. Whoever has a consistent number of realistic conversations every single day is going to win. Okay. If you do that, you're going to win. And what we're going to talk about today, generating qualified seller leads from circle prospecting is just another tool in your toolbox to have those conversations. Okay. And you can buy leads from Facebook or Google or Wilopo or Zillow, or you can call your sphere and your database and your past clients. All of that works. Every, you can put a billboard in a highly transited area. All of those work. The goal is to generate conversations every day with new people, with new people. And if you can figure out a way to do that, you're going to be successful no matter what. I like circle prospecting because it is a very efficient way to have those conversations. It is a very efficient way to do it. You can be in the comfort of your own office. You can be, you know, in your home office. It can be in your brokerage office. It can be at a Starbucks, maybe. It has to be a quiet Starbucks. It can be somewhere else. But your co-working space, you sit down in a laptop, you get your headset on, and that's usually all you need. And you need a little bit of time, right? That is what it takes to be successful in circle prospecting. It's very efficient to do. You can do it from the comfort of your own home and be lead generating every single day. And Tara, I want to ask you as a practitioner, like, why did you choose Circle Pro? It's kind of, it's not common actually for people to build their business or to get, forget build their business, generate business from Circle Prospecting consistently. Why did you try it out? And what kind of results have you gotten, Tara? I have to say in the beginning, you know, I, it was it was heavy expired, especially luxury. However, I run a seven levels of communication uh, business, which is based on referrals. And I don't want a cold call. Like there's so many different ways to be able to build businesses. And I like the, the easiest cold calls for me that also generate the highest return are the circle prospecting. So I'm circle prospecting when a new listing is coming on the market, a coming soon, when we're going to have an open house, when the price had changed or when we just closed, like there's certain steps. That, that we follow. And they're easy conversations because I'm not necessarily selling something, yet I'm building a relationship, right? And it's it's the, the success is in building those relationships. Some conversations are this, but I'm not like, hey, do you want to do you want to sell your home? Hey, uh, let me show you how I can do it better. Or it's it's a different way to do business. Sometimes it turns into, you know, a seller survey or, you know, you have a unique opportunity to pick your own neighbor. Who do you know that I should know? And it leads into other conversations. So I just find that it's more up to style with my personality. And also if I just generally come from contribution and having that, that circle prospecting around wherever the listing is. And it doesn't even have to be my listing. That's the best part. You just ask permission. <laughs> if you just find a listing that was already sold or pending or went on the market and you can call, they have access to the same info. I'm not advertising that that listing was mine. So it's really like a no brainer. Does that make yeah. sense? A hundred percent. And when I started doing this, I, circle prospecting, and I love that. Thank you, Tara. Circle prospecting for me was the kind of cold calling I did the most. But by it's not close. I, I did a lot of expired and old expired, and I did circle prospect. And that's one of the most I have, the one I have the most personal experience with. And you know, in case folks haven't noticed, I can talk out of my, you know, out of my elbows, you know, with, with folks, especially folks I didn't know. And even though I built my business initially on my sphere and my database, I always found circle prospecting to be the easiest kind of calling. Uh, that I could do because there was no, I wasn't, you know, I, I'd always get anxious about calling my former co-workers and my family and my friends. I had a lot of, you know, limiting beliefs around that, but for whatever reason, I had zero limiting beliefs when it came to circle prospecting because it was like, it was the lowest stakes kind of conversation you could have. And it was very easy for me to do. And it was all about just having a conversation with someone. That's really what circle prospecting was. And, you know, and you, when you compare it to expired and for sale by owner, also prospecting kind of calls, right? And I don't want to knock them, but they're great. 
it takes more skill, right? It is a very, you know, like Kara said, you're kind of having hand-to-hand comment there. You got to kind of go through the clothes. You got to know what you're doing if you want to be successful with some of these expired and for sale by owners. The neuro-linguistic programming is a thing because they're harder to convert, right? It, you're, you're, it's, it's more combat than conversation. I, 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 that's a good distinction. You're not fighting with them necessarily, but there's an adversarial start to the relationship. It's adversarial from the get-go. And for me, that was harder to do. It was just harder. And I did both. I called expired and I called it super prospecting. I can do super prospecting every day and I wouldn't sweat it, right? It was like, oh, man, talk to more people. I, I remember one call specifically. I connected with someone that was in Seattle and, and they were from Seattle, had lived in Seattle, but they were in Maui at that point. They had moved away. I had, I think, almost a 30-minute conversation with this person, right? Because they were telling me about the, what they had done and the real estate experiences and then living in Maui. I've been to Maui. Oh, wow, I love that. Where do you live in Maui? We had a conversation. I, I didn't get a listing from that, but I got a referral from that. <laughs> Amazingly, at that sounds. We connect. We never worked, never met, we never worked together, but we connected on that call. And I gave, I, I made such a great impression on this person. They were not going to be able to hire me because I'm, I'm not licensed in Hawaii. But they knew a lot of people in Seattle and they were ended up referring buyer over to us, which I thought was amazing, right? But it just comes to show you, it, it circle prospecting was very effective at getting conversations started with people I didn't know. And at the beginning, I didn't even have listings to call around, Tara. Same thing. I would borrow the listings from my brokerage and I would use the royal we. Hey, we just sold this home like two blocks from your, from your, from your house. Guess what? Right? This and that. Right? And we're going to get into the scripting part of it soon, folks. Don't worry about it. But but that was as easy as it was. And 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 Tara, tell us some of the you know what what results have you gotten from circle prospecting? Right? I mean, because you you it's it's the only kind of cold calling you do. I'm guessing it's a reason you're a referral and recommendation kind of business. But you use this to generate more people into that database. Can you mention some of those big wins you've gotten from doing circle prospecting? I know off the top of my head and I have to pull it from my CRM because everybody that was from Circle Prospecting would have a tag as Circle Prospecting to show where the source is from. So it says it'll say CP dash the neighborhood, like the name of the neighborhood so that I can circle back, especially if you get a call. Like I had one that I had called a few months ago and it was from a Circle Prospecting conversation that was two and a half years ago. And I probably only followed up with them. You know, they first go on an eight by eight campaign where they get eight touches in eight weeks. And it's a system that's that's repetitive. And then from there, it usually just turns into either, you know, once a quarter or just something very generic four times a year. And it, it doesn't really cost anything because it, it's repeat, right? I can, yeah. I can produce it all in massive. Broadcast, I, broadcast. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's the same information really. It's, or it's items of value. It just depends on what the, what the neighborhood is. So one particular scenario, um, he, we had called in a neighborhood. I was looking for actually a um, off market opportunity for a buyer that we couldn't find anything on MLS and the numbers didn't make sense. And his budget was only up to 1.5 million. And I ended up getting a um, opportunity with somebody who had just um, uh, moved back home to where they had lived. And they had said, you know, you know, I, I'm not looking to buy or to sell. However, I would like to know how much the value of my home is. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> when's when's a good time for me to stop by for fifteen minutes so I can I can take a look at your home and get my eyes on it. We actually did everything via Zoom and um, it was a video walkthrough. Wow. And I ended up a week and a half later listing that property for two point two million and sold it for two point three. And then they ended up buying uh, another property. So just that one alone was worth um, even six that months, maybe the, a, the, a year. The price, I'm not of even... <laughs> the price of admission, right? So I I, I love that you know. And, and these examples, you know, they're they're very encouraging, and they show the power of having qualified conversations every single day with potential sellers, even if they're potential, even if they're potential. I was talking to another agent, and this wasn't even one of my clients, by the way. And, you know, I, you know, I'm gonna. Her name is Michelle, and she had just started in San Diego, California. 
One of the hardest markets to do cold calling in, by the way, not easy to do, not a very high density area, a lot of competition, a lot of people trying to call in that area and San Diego, California. And she was 30 days in to doing, it was doing it an hour a day. They're doing circle prospecting one hour a day, just trying to have conversations. San Diego, it can be slow going in Southern California to get conversations. And she had one conversation with the seller, right? And they connected. Hey, you know what? I might be thinking of selling, but you know, I'm not sure yet. I'm there. They never say come list me, right? That's the only thing that, that you know they're not going to say that. But there, there's some curiosity there, right? There's some interest. There's an inkling of motivation, and you have to grab onto that and have and have a real human conversation with them because you're coming from contribution, like you said, there. You're trying to help them out, trying to help them, and if that comes through that call. You can have a good conversation with them. What ended up happening for her was 30 days in, they, she talked to that seller and 90 days from that, she listed the property, okay? Over $2 million properties in San Diego. It's like it's not, that, not that uncommon to have a $2 million hole, but the ROI for her, she said she probably had invested probably from beginning to listing, probably five hours, no more than 10 hours, to get a five-figure payday. I don't have to tell you how much money probably she made from that listing, um, but that was that, that kind of opened up her mind saying, holy cow, right? It's just a question of having qualified conversations. One of my clients, Mitch Baraski, Mitch, he's out in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think this is a crazy story because the only thing he's ever done to launch his business was circle prospecting. The only difference, he did something a little bit different than most agents do, is that he only focused, a little bit more like Tara, focused on luxury. He said, I am going to be a luxury. This is from zero, by the way. First year in the business. First year in the business. Came and said, I want to be a luxury agent. He didn't know anyone, a high net worth individual. He wasn't one himself. He goes, well, how can I talk to a lot of potential clients every day? Circle seems like a good idea. I don't know who put this idea in his head because that's not, not what I would think of. Let me circle dial around these luxury neighborhoods. And luxury, you know, in, in, in North Carolina, as Charlotte, starts at 700000 which might be a condo in San Diego. Guys, you know, adjust accordingly. Thank you. <laughs> I know, exactly, right? So 700000 is is luxury in, in, in Charlotte. He goes, I'm going to call around these neighborhoods, minimum seven hundred and above. Let's go. And the hardest one to get in the first three months was that first seller. Conversation with them. But once they let him in the door, he did not waste that opportunity. He went, he goes, he's never worked so hard for a seller than that first one he got. And that luxury listing in Charlotte went all out to market the property, work for them, get a happy seller. He goes, because once he got his foot in the door in that market, that's all he did for the rest of the year. He, he leveraged that experience, that review, that feedback from that one seller to get referrals and recommendations from their sphere and use that as an example on his calls. Hey, I just sold this property down the street. Da, da, da. I'm not just a random caller anymore. I'm a local area expert now. Check this out. He did 20 million in volume his first year in real estate. Okay. That's incredible. 20 million volume first year in real estate. All he does, even right now, is circle prospect. He goes, why would he do something different if that's what's working best? Because he's good at building relationships. It's just a question of talking to more people, getting more people into the relationship machine, right? Into and I, you know, I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm being I'm joking with that, but the relationship machine is what Tara described, getting them into that, that referral recommendation machine, that marketing machine, eight by eight, monthly newsletter, quarterly check-in. That's it, folks. That's, that's, that, that's where the magic happens. But you got to get more people into that. You can't just Absolutely. do it in your sphere, right? If you only do it with your sphere, you're going to limit yourself. Go for it, Tara. Absolutely. So, be, and before we talk about what are the simplest ways would be, you can look at their tax records. You can see when they bought the house. So that's a, that's one touch a year for a home anniversary that you can just input into your CRM and say their home anniversary was there, whether you sold the house to them or not, it doesn't matter. And I know that we're giving that example. And before we tell them exactly how to do this, because what you have to offer is so incredible. And I know that those that are on the webinar actually get a um, special code as or get a special um uh, what I call it, a promo as well for being here. And before we talk about that, I know that we, we gave two luxury examples. And I know there's some people on here that are like, I don't sell luxury and I don't work in an area that has luxury. So I just want to preface that there was one that I had circle prospected and her mother's brother's sister 
was not doing well. And she just liked my personality and we just vibed well. We talked about Ford, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Like the whole conversation didn't even turn into real estate. It turned into a belly to belly like conversation later on because I went in door knocks the next day and left her like a thing of edible arrangements. And it turned, it was just, it was just the human business, right? And so I wasn't even sure if real estate was going to come out of it. Yet I built a relationship and then I listed, um, Six properties for her. Now, one was a $70,000 condo. One was an $80,000 condo. One was a $140,000 condo. And it was the same, her brother's sister's sister's uh, portfolio. And then there were three pieces of land. Now, the pieces of land were $5,500 to $6,500 a piece. We're not talking a whole lot. Yet, when can I circle prospect? And I literally just picked up six listings in, in, in one conversation of building a relationship where the initial call was about uh, the real hourly rate is pretty good the hourly rate for that you know one hour one hour invested is is even if it's a smaller listing that's pretty phenomenal it's a thousand dollar an hour activity Absolutely. So I love your program. Please tell them how they can do yeah, this because exactly, it's pretty exactly. incredible. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, 100%. And, and I have one more example. I have one more example because I love this. Uh, another one of my clients, Jonathan Tiedemann, he's out. He's in South Carolina. He's in South Carolina. And he just and he just joined. He's literally just a really a, a new client of ours. But he came in with a background in circle prospecting. I, I'm always curious about these things. I go, great. Well, now you got to tell me more, right? What have you been doing? And what do your numbers look like? Because I think a lot of people have questions about that. And I went, I went really detailed with Jonathan. Um, actually, that's another interview. You know, if people want that, you drop a comment in the chat. I'll, I'll get back to you. On, I'll send you the link. But I, I interviewed him and I asked him like in depth, what did your numbers look like? Because he said, you know, it, uh, he wasn't very impressed with his numbers actually. No, I don't know if I'm, I'm not a super mega producer. You know, I'm doing well, but I don't know if I want to go out, put myself out there. And, you know, the, when I looked at his numbers, he, it took him three months to gain traction. So not, that's a really common number. It was two and a half to three months to start to get his first listing opportunity. Okay. Which I thought was phenomenal actually, but he was like, eh, it's not that fast. It, was, it took me several months. And once he took that listing, the first, first year in real estate for him as well. Right. So he took that listing. He's had seven transactions in four months. Okay. Wow. Seven transactions. The first one took three months though. Okay. Uh, this is not a, oh, this t- takes off in a minute. It doesn't take off in a minute, folks. Got to put work, <laughs> right? But once he started, he's gotten seven deals in four months from Circle Prospecting. And I thought that was like amazing, right? And his numbers were very simple. And he was almost embarrassed to tell me this because he thought he wasn't working hard enough. But it was a, a great example. It was usually for him one hour up to two a day. He tried to do it five days a week. Was not always successful. Was not always that's, that's the way he put it. Was not always successful doing it every single day. He tried to do it every day, but usually three to four times a week. Three to four times on average. On average, and he would. But he, his numbers were very religious, and he wanted to make two hundred calls as long as it would take him to do 200 calls. Initially, he didn't even have any dialer technology, which is his phone, okay? So it, it was nowhere near that number initially. He built up to that. He got, I think he signed up with Red X as well. He got a, the, the tool, the technology behind it. He could dial a little bit faster, not a 10 line dialer on somebody that no, no, like, just talk about two line dialer, just made it more efficient. It, instead of two, two to three hours to make 200 dials, he could do it within an hour very easily. Some of this technology. Yeah. And his goal was 200 dials, 10 to 20 conversations, 10 to 20 conversations, and two to five emails for his database. Okay. He just kept it simple because you're not going to get conversions every day from certain prospecting. I want to sell on this much time. For no, no. It's like, but his goal was even easier than that. Hey, can I get it? And he used, this is a very, I think it's a Ricky Karuk kind of script where, hey, can I have your, can I at least get your email to put you in my newsletter where I share, you know, the listing of the week every week or, or you know, the, my real estate tips of the market, market status every week. Is that okay? Great. His goal was to get two to five new people into that database every day, mm. okay? every day using a very low stakes question. Can I have your email? to put it into my data, it's gonna happen, right? And out of those conversations, he might get one qualified seller lead, which means, what I mean by qualified seller, let's define that real quick, very simple. Confirmed homeowner, valid phone number, you can reach them at, 
And there's something about, there's interest. There's interest in selling. There's interest, motivation, right? They're either curious or they've got questions <clears throat> or they're willing to admit they're going to do something, but not just not right now. Most That's what most sellers say. Even if they're 90 days out, by the way, that's what they're going to tell you because you haven't built a relationship yet. They have no idea what your credentials are, what your expertise is. You haven't had a chance to do that yet. But, but that's what we call a qualified seller lead. Confirmed homeowner, they own the home, they live there, they got the phone number for them. And there is something about that motivation that is worth following up with, okay? That is worth following up with. And, and my, my client, Jonathan, went even further and said, you know what, as long as you're willing to give me your email, I'll put you in my database. Would you like to get an email about local real estate news? And he would put local, so his email was really simple. Every, he sends this every week religiously, okay? And his email always had three sections. Number one, market news, real estate news, something valuable about real estate in the local market. Number two, a featured business, a featured business. And that everyone in the neighborhood and the area should go visit. And I love that. And number three, the listing of the week, okay? Listing of the week, something interesting, beautiful, ugly, funny, silly, interesting about a listing that he came across during that week. It might be the best price deal in his city. It might be, you know, the funniest looking picture that he found. It was always something interesting, okay? And folks, as real estate agents, we see one of those every day, okay? That either we think is a screaming deal, we think is a beautiful home, or we think is on the other end of the spectrum of the curiosity spectrum, right? So there's always, we're always seeing those things. Well, he would take yeah. that and he'd send it to his database every single week, okay? And I, gosh, just so I have that correct, it was a feature business, a listing of the week. And what was the first one? Oh, real estate news, local real estate okay. news, something about worth sales and, and prices and market and interest rates, whatever it was, right? And he'd get this information from his lenders, from his partners. You know, you, you get it from Googling real estate news. It's being connected, right? So we put some news at the beginning, featured business and a listing of the week, a listing of the week. And I absolutely love that idea, right? Because it helped position him as an expert, okay? At the beginning, all these people that were getting this email had no idea who he was, right? They, just, they called them. There was a connection. Okay, fine. He put them on these weekly emails, and the emails helped him build that relationship. He had to follow up, though, right? There's not mad. They don't, they don't come list you off the newsletter. That doesn't happen, folks. That's not a thing. The newsletter, any kind of piece of information you put in front of them helps build rapport, build expertise. And the magical phrase, which I love, Keep you top of mind, okay? Mm. Even if you only read the headline, even if they only see the email coming into their inbox. Oh, that's Tara emailing me again. Man, she's really on it. I wish I were that way. <laughs> I wish I were as consistent as Tara was. Oh, well, you know? So, so that's sometimes that's what you get. You get that name recognition. You get that, oh, Tara emailing me again. Gus emailing me again. Oh my God. Uh, you know, that's sometimes all you get, but it helps keep you top of mind with that conversation. So I love that example from Jonathan because it can be very, very fruitful endeavor. But let's jump into it, okay? Let's get, okay, I want to start with the prospect and I want to do it at the highest level. Folks, you're going to need three things, okay? And if you stick around to the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you a really awesome freebie, okay? For everyone watching, I'm going to give you a really awesome freebie. You got to watch all the way to the end. You will be rewarded. But I want to share this with you. You need three main things. Three main things, okay? Number one, you need a data source, okay? You need a way to get these phone numbers, to acquire these phone numbers in an efficient way, at volume, right? Because circle prospecting, even if you're only doing it an hour a day, is a volume game, okay? You've got to talk to as many people as possible. You usually need a large amount of data. And it's usually going to be, at least on the low end, two to 3,000 numbers every month. Every single month, you're going to need at least two to 3,000 numbers to dial every single month, depending on where you go. Jonathan needed at least 5,000 every single month, right? So, and there's a great way to get these data. We have one of our LCA partners, Red X. That's what Jason Jonathan mm. used in South Carolina. Red X, GeoLeads, get their GeoLeads product. I'm pretty sure, I think they're at 10, they think they give me 10,000. Uh, a month, right? Because I know it because I recommend it when they have ISAs, right? And I'm going to talk about ISAs. I'll get into the ISA part as well, but I want to go a little bit further back than that because I want to teach you guys how to do this. You need data, okay? 
Red X is a great one. Mojo has a neighborhood search circle prospecting option. It's great as well. And My Plus Leads, MyPlusLeads.com is another great vendor. Red X is awesome because you get a deal by being through LCA, which I think is pretty cool. So that is a great option as well. Pick one of those and you need, it's number one, need data, need data. Number two, you need a dialer, okay? You need a way to dial these folks at, in volume. And depending on how many people you talk to, you can get away maybe with a single line or a two line dialer. You might need to bump it up to a three line dialer, right? That might be necessary. But again, do not make the mistake. There's a mistake of focusing too much on how many dials. Oh, I need, because there's some tools. I, I've used them, call tools, batch dialer, some of the big, big, big monster dialers that can dial thousands of numbers a day. They can do that, thousands of numbers a day, 10 lines, all these things. That's not the goal though, okay? Number one, it's only gonna get your number tagged to spam faster if you dial too much. You're only gonna get tagged to spam faster. You don't wanna do that, it's counterproductive. And the metric you have to look for is how many conversations are you having on a daily basis? How many conversations? Because your goal should be to have 20 conversations and get one qualified seller lead. As an agent, agent doing this job, that, that is a good conversion rate. You might not start there, but that's a good, you talk to 20 random people on the street and you get one potential seller. Imagine that, right? That's kind of crazy. So doing that, you can have success with triple prospecting. And a lot of agents do way better than that, by the way. For, for some people doing it at the highest level, they just need to talk to five people, right? And it might not be them selling their home. It might be a referral. It might be a recommendation, right? But they get they get a nurture out of it. They get a qualified seller lead. Okay, really important to understand that. So that's the kind of numbers you have to focus on. The dot it might take you more dials or less dials to do that. In San Diego, California, it's going to take way more dials to do that than in Charlotte, North Carolina. Smaller city, less competition, less people dialing, right? Trying to get people's attention. And that's a big factor. So, but, but focus on that. How many conversations? 10 conversations in an hour is an average. It's a good amount. 10 conversations in one hour is really good, right? And you can do that as an agent, as a solo agent. Jonathan did that in South Carolina. He would have 10 to uh, 10, about 10 an hour, 10 to 20 an hour, right? So somewhere in that range. It's never going to be a, that's how averages work, right? That's roughly where you want to be. If you can have 10 conversations in one hour, you can be successful with circle prospecting, okay? That can be a great kind of a return on that, okay? So we've talked about data. We've talked about dialer. The next is the script, okay? The script. And I want to ask Tara, so Tara, and Tara, be honest here. Lying is the devil. Lying is the devil, right? What? How did you? How did your calls? How do you start your calls with circle prospecting? And how did you arrive at that? At that intro? Remember, be honest. This is, I want the real response, not like you know what, what the record best practice. I want Tara's practice. What did Tara do? So typically it was around uh, the open houses and because I run 60% of the business is uh, open houses. So it was, hi, this is Tara Carter, your local real estate agent. And I don't know if you noticed, but we have listed your neighbors at 123 Main Street. And as a common courtesy, I wanted to let you know that there may be some extra traffic in the area this Saturday. And we have politely asked that nobody blocks the driveways and or your mailboxes. And in advance, I'd love to apologize. By the way, have you seen this home? Are you aware that it's for sale? I usually come from contribution um, oh, first. And, and what happens is, or it's going to be that we're taking a neighborhood survey. Um, or there was one script that I would follow from, from Jeff Glover that I loved very much. And I never internalized it. So I went more of like the Rachel Adams route and let him know, like, mm -hmm. basically I'm saying that my marketing is so good that there's going to be so much traffic in the area <laughs> from, from, uh, from all the I efforts that. that I did. And they'd be like, wow, no, I'm like, and then I would invite them over. So it would turn into not a sales call. Like, um, you know, are you looking to, you know, buy a seller, sell your home? And you're looking to understand how much the value is. Usually it would, it would lead into that. It just not initially wasn't my opening. I got you. I got you. That, that totally makes sense. And I love that. Right. So we, we have a, a little bit of a different script, but ultimately what you want to do, the kind of the kind of structure that you want 
to have is that, hey, there is a really compelling reason for me to call you today, right? And, and I, the really compelling reason for me to be making these calls, and I'm looking for people that might need help, you know, selling their home. That's basically the structure that script should have. And, and Tara, I love the way you laid it out. I'm doing such a great job with this open house. There's just going to be, and I'm going to have a lot of traffic and have a lot of these things. You're doing a great job here. And, and then you ask them about them, which is the thing that they want to talk, the part that they want to talk about the most. What is, what is it about them that they might be able to use that service? And I've seen this, there's a few variations of the script. It can be as simple as just listed or just sold. Hey, we just listed this property. We've had an amazing amount of interest, da, 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 all this and that. And then you ask them, well, hey, do you currently own or do you rent a home? You want to get into that qualification part of the script eventually. But the most important part, the most important part of this script, circle prospecting, is that intro. It's got to be quick. It's got to be to the point. It has to identify who's calling. That's important, right? You want to stay compliant. And you want to tell them the purpose of that call, right? And you want to talk about the reason for the call. And the, my personal favorite, the one I had the most success with always was, hey, you know, this is Gus with ABC Realty. And guess what? I just sold a home, right? A block away from your, from, a block away from your 123 Main Street. And I have 10 buyers that couldn't get it. Right. There's ten, there's an overflow of buyers, overflow buyer interest, and they couldn't get that property for them. Do you know anyone that might be thinking of relocating at some point in the future? I really want to help out these guys. Right. So for me, that was the ultimate come from contribution. Can you help me? Kind of script. Can you? You're all right. If you want to sell some, if you if you're this call trying to sell something to people, you're going to get hung up on immediately. Okay. The consumer doesn't tolerate that, uh, uh, cold calling, you can't do that. If you're cold calling, trying to help out your client, can you help me here? Tara, can you help me out? I'm trying to find a great home for this family, trying to move this out. Do you know anyone that might be thinking of selling? I'm helping them out. I'm canvassing the neighborhood, canvassing, trying to find someone that might be thinking of selling, right? And, and here's another little mini story, because Jonathan also told me the exact same thing. He said, he found, he had a buyer, he didn't have any listings in this area. He had multiple buyers, one that wanted a really specific type of home. He circle prospected with that, I have a buyer message. I've got a buyer trying to look for a home like this. Do you know anyone? And this is great. He found someone for his buyer. So he had like, had the, already had the buyer and he, and he generated the buyer from circle prospecting too, because he called her rent. Yeah. Wanted to buy a home. This is actually very common, guys. Very yeah. common to find people renting homes that want to become buyers. So people think Circle is only for sellers. It can actually generate both for you, right? So I love that part of it. But he generated the buyer and the seller and had the both both under contract, right? Within 30 years. I thought that was amazing. But, but it can that be really is. It, it's coming from contribution. And if people, if you're asking them for help, it's a very different reception for that call. Like, oh wow. Well, that's interesting. Well, uh, and get them thinking about it. Oh, maybe I don't know anyone. And that's fine. And thank you for, for considering that. How about yourself? Have you ever thought of relocating at some point in the future, right? You currently own or do you rent your home? Okay, well, how about this? And have you ever thought about this? Have you thought about that? And try to have a real conversation with them to see where that can go. It's, a, it's all about asking the next question. Asking the next yeah. question. And, and, li and listening. Like in listening to what they're saying is so key. And I loved you reminding me too, because especially this two years for COVID and things are obviously worse. Like I just got 14 offers on a listing last week. If it's priced right and staged well, you win the price war in the beauty contest. Anything's going to sell, right? So, <laughs> so it was the same thing as what you're saying. It would say, you know, we had just listed this home and we went under contract and we had 14 offers. That means 13 families are going love to be this, very disappointed. Yeah, they love this neighborhood and they didn't get picked. So do you know anyone that's looking to possibly sell their home? Because there's 13 families that I would love to help that want to be your neighbor. And it's it's the same thing. And it's it, you're, and that's a genuine comment. Because it's not even about us wanting to help. We're wanting to help the families that lost out on the opportunity, you know? Yeah. So it's uh, a different uh, way to do business. A hundred percent. And and I always love that. that it, number one, it made me feel better using that mm -hmm. script. Right? I feel like I was helping out my client. And it also was a much different reception from on the other end of that line, right? To, to get started. But for me, the whole game of circle prospecting is those first couple of sentences. That's the game. That's the game. That's either going to get you someone to listen or it's going to get you to do the easiest thing for them to do, which is hang up the phone. 
That is the easiest thing for them to do. People can get concerned about, oh, will people be mean, mean to me on the phone? I mean, I can happen, but I'm like, yeah, it's certain product is such a low stakes uh, situation. It's not a, it's not expired and it's not for sale by owner. That, no. <laughs> that is, there's a lot of stake in that conversation. This one, we're just trying to get to know each other. I'm just, I'm just curious, right? Can you answer this with little question for me? And how about this other one? And one more, right? So that's the script. It's a very simple script, Circle Prospect. It's a very simple. It's actually very deceptively simple because the most important things from that conversation don't happen on the script, right? Like Tara said, listen to what they're saying. Okay, this is where your own, uh, uh, you know, your own curiosity, your own genuine curiosity in people comes through through circle prospecting because you just want to hear them say something about the local schools or the, the, the current market or anything. And you can contribute to that. Okay, you can ask them more. You can try and help inform them, give them some information, figure out if there are any anxiety about the current market. You think, right, maybe. Uh, is there any anxiety about the current economy, about what's going on? And you can educate them. You can talk to them. You can be a consultant for them. You can do many things. That's not on the script, though, okay? Because that's about you listening, listening. And when we, for our ISA team, the way we scaled Circle Prospecting in the beginning was we, we measured this. This is a quality. I'm, I'm getting a little, a little bit off topic here, but when you're doing this at scale with ISAs, the way we measured this and we evaluated this was how good were you at active listening, okay? And we call it, and that's a term, you know, it's industry term, active listening, which meant someone someone said something to you and you incorporated that into the conversation. That's what we, we meant by active listening. You, you used the information they gave you, you confirmed it, you validated it, and you used it in the conversation. You, you utilize that, that's important, right? Because you're listening to them, they feel to listen to, and it can be a very relevant part of building that relationship, building that relationship. Because amen, it's all about building rapport, building rapport, right? But you know, when you're training someone to build rapport for you, you got to get specific, right? Like, hey, what does what does rapport even mean? For us, the way we systematized it was two things: you got to show genuine curiosity in this person's situation, I mean, and you can't fake that, folks. You can't fake genuine curiosity, right? You got, it's got to it's got to be people can tell. It got to be got to be real. Oh, tell me more about that. Why is that? Oh, okay, you got to wait five years to sell this home. I'm interested. Why is that? Right? Why do you have to wait for it? What's going on? Oh, interesting. I love I love to learn more about that. Gen, number one, general curiosity. And number two, what I mentioned, active listening. Okay. Genuine curiosity plus active listening builds rapport, folks. That's what that is. That helps people have a conversation with you. It helps your conversations last longer with them. And you're much more likely, if they're doing the talking, you're asking questions, genuine curiosity, and then you're using their answers to continue the conversation. You're going to have better conversations, longer conversations, okay? And that is ultimately the game. Now, last part of this equation, we talked about the three, data, dialer, script. The last part of this, to really add scale, can be an ISA, right? Because that is the ultimate way to scale up. Because circle prospecting, when you're doing it on your own, is difficult to scale. It's not easy to do. Hey, someone can let someone else do another because other agents, they all have an hour to dedicate to this. Maybe, maybe they've got two hours to dedicate to this consistently. It's hard. So all the people I mentioned, Mitch and Jonathan and other folks that have come to us, the thing they had in common was, okay, great. I've only got so much time to do calls. I, I can't, I'd love to do more, but I'm actually getting busier now. Right. And I don't want to be caught in the roller coaster of income where I get busy, I generate less leads, and I don't have any money three months down the line. Okay. That is the most common outcome when people are successful with lead generation. Unfortunately, they get busy, they stop lead generating, they get, they fulfill, they stop generating new business, they fulfill business, and then they're back to square one in a short amount of time, very short amount of time. That's the way it works. The way to get out of that cycle is to do consistent lead generation. So Jonathan and Mitch would get these results from doing one hour, two hours of calling a day. The way they decided to scale their business was get someone doing it eight hours a day, okay? Hire an ISA to help them do exactly what we talked about. They do exactly the same thing. 
They just do it more than you. And I tell folks, well, they're going to be, they're probably going to be as skilled as Tara or me or Mitch or Jonathan. They're not going to be as skilled at it. They're not going to be as good at it, but they're going to do it eight hours a day. Okay. So even if they're 70% as effective as I am, as Tara is, Jonathan is, but they're doing it four times more every single day. Circle prospecting is the ultimate numbers game. Okay. It is the ultimate numbers game. It is just a game of talking to the most people and delivering that value to as many people as possible every single day. But starting more conversations, starting more conversations, because what happens is the ISA has those initial conversations with them. And the first thing they do is they hand them off to Jonathan. They hand them off to Mitch, right? Boom. Mitch, call this person, right? Introduce yourself. I'm going to have Mitch introduce himself. That's it. Very low stakes, very low commitment level. I'll have Mitch call you in the next few days. He'll introduce himself and see if you have any questions. Great. Awesome. That's amazing. Handing it off. One person a day, two people a day, three people a day. That's the game. That's the game. So Mitch and Jonathan now spend more of their time talking to the most motivated people, people that are conversational. It's to save them a lot of time, right? So that's it. So folks, uh, we're pretty much out of time now. I want to end with that. And last but not least, I have a freebie for you. For those who are sticking around, the 46 people on this call right now live and the people watching live afterwards, okay? I will, If you want a free copy of our Circle Prospecting Script, we use to make 50,000 calls a day for years, Fifty thousand calls a day for years. Send an email, right? You might be get, might be getting used to this. I like this because it, it can be automated, and I don't have to remember to do this. You send an email to info at powerisa.com. Info at powerisa.com. Send an email with these words in the subject: free circle script. Just have to put three words in there: free circle script. Drop an email with that, those three words in the subject line, and we will respond with the free circle prospecting script that we've used so many times for so many years. Uh, it's yours as a freebie gift for jumping on the call today um, and getting all this value. Free circle script, okay? You'll get an automated response that should be in place after this call. So if you're emailing right now before I'm done, call not on yet. So give, give, me, give us a minute, right? but it'll be on and you're watching this on the replay, it'll absolutely be working. So check it out, free circle script to get our free circle prospect. I love it, Gus. And you know, it's, I'll be totally honest. I don't want to call anymore. So a system like Power ISA is literally the solution to be able for me to be able to weed out the things that will give me my time back because time is money and I know what my dollar per hour is and I don't I just want to talk to the warm ones. <laughs> so I love what you offer because they're using the scripts they, they're, they're they're trained they're efficient it's it's obviously working the numbers are there and that's why lab code agents also chooses to um or partner with you because it, it works. And we had a question um, from Susan before we go. And she had said, assuming very few people actually answer, what message do you leave on voicemail or do you text? And I, oh. I believe that would be a question also for your, your ISAs. And I think she's also asking for herself. Yeah, hundred percent. So for this kind of calling, we don't, we don't recommend leaving any kind of voicemails, not at all. The only ones that would do is maybe a physical one expired. And I would leave them a question of like, are you still accepting offers on that home or is the property still available? That is a very compelling voicemail for FISBO and Expire. They'll call you back from that. For circle prospecting, the, we rather have them call back out of curiosity. That's the best we can do. We have not found a voicemail that is compelling enough to start a conversation and build a relationship with, right? I don't think there is one, to be very honest with you. I would have found it by now. We don't leave a voicemail. Don't leave a voicemail. You're, you're canvassing the neighborhood, right? So that is not a great voicemail script, to be honest with you. It is a great conversation starter. It's not a compelling voicemail script. The voicemail has to be powerful, has to be converting, has to be like very action oriented. And that's better for the more, uh, for, for the higher converting leads, like a FISBO expired if you want to go that route. But I wouldn't recommend it for Circle. And I certainly wouldn't recommend texting uh, folks because it's too many text messages. People are going to get mad. They're going to get in trouble for that. Don't do that. Circle of prospecting on the calling. You want conversations to go, right? If you want to do text marketing, I would recommend that for inbound leads. It's much better use of your time. Absolutely. Um, my, my favorite, if I ever leave a voicemail on any sort of 
of cold calling, I always say, hi, this is Tara Carter, or I'll say, hi, this is Tara. I just had a quick question for you. If you can please call me back at blank. And then that's all I say. Okay, and then you they'll call. <laughs> yeah, and you're, then you're, call. You're, you're, you're using the curiosity factor. That's it. That, I mean, that, that's the best you can do. That's the best you can do. And I, for me, the ultimate one for, for our ISAs is don't even leave a voicemail. Let's see, let's yeah. call back, right? So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, and I love the quote, make sure that you guys Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you guys have not already. This will be up there as well. And uh, the info at Power ISA. And that was Free Circle Script. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, guys, for all that you do. We are grateful for you. Thanks, everybody. Love was a Bye. great one. Right. Cool. Publish it. Book it. It's You're awesome. Moment.